on the news, former OPEC president Diazane Alison Wadueke charged with bribery in the UK. New defense ministers rail out strategies for national security. And President Bola Tinubu meets ECOWAS President Abdul Salami over Niger Republic crisis. Hello and welcome to News Now on TV360 Nigeria. I am Simisola Adjikon. Former president of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, Dezani Alison Madureke, has been charged by the United Kingdom's National Crime Agency with bribery offenses relating to her time as Nigeria's oil minister. Alison Madureke, who served as Petroleum Minister from 2010 to 2015 under the administration of former President Goodluck Jonathan, is being accused by the NCA of benefiting from at least £100,000 in cash and the use of multiple London properties. According to the head of the NCA's International Corruption Unit, Andy Kelly, Dezani Alison Madureke is suspected to have abused her power in Nigeria and accepted financial rewards for award in multi-million pound contracts. Madweke, who has been on bail since her first arrest in London in 2015, is expected to appear in court in the British capital on October 2nd. Well, legal expert Evans Ufeli joins me on the news to speak further on this. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, Alison Madreke has been charged with bribery offenses. Now, just like the Aquarium Meadows, what's your take on the rise of alleged corrupt politicians being charged and jailed abroad? Yes, um, the allegation came in at, at a time when um, everyone had thought that uh, she had been left off the hook because if you look at... Uh, Designing Alice in Mandrake, she, she before now, allegations have been leveled against her by the Nigerian EFCC. And uh, those allegations have spiraled out up to a point where it looked like she had been left off the hook because no serious prosecution have, have uh, been decided on. But now the United Kingdom um, uh, agency uh, is making the allegations to the effect that she uh, has been involved in uh, a lot of bribe and corruption during her tenure in office. And that allegation is one that she's been charged for. Um, uh, it is the law that uh, a suspect, when charged uh, with an offense, must go and face trial. And you know, in the United Kingdom, um, the issue of a criminal prosecution is taken very seriously. So if these allegations are true, and she will be charged according to the laws of the United Kingdom. And um, if uh, she's found guilty, of course, the penalties were applied. Um, it, it, this uh, goes a long way to also uh, validate what the ESCC have, have done so far. The ESCC have these many allegations against her. Uh, and now that uh, the United Kingdom is um, uh, going to charge her, perhaps it looks like uh, all the while the ESCC had uh, made the uh, uh, serious, uh, uh, this allegation serious, but the United Kingdom taking up this issue right now uh, is one that is coming with a lot of relief for us because she has not been able to go through the issues of prosecution under our own jurisdiction. But now, so, as a former uh, OPEC chairman, all right, so I was about to ask, Madweke is set to be sick. Now, do you think that the court will reduce her sentence if she's found guilty? She said, yeah, well, there's a medical, she has a medical condition of cancer and the rest of that. But, you know, criminal prosecution and liability is usually blind to uh, issues of uh, uh, health care. The only point where health care can play a role is where perhaps uh, as, uh, someone wants to uh, take her on bail, then when there is serious uh, health issue, then that will apply. But as regards prosecution and conviction, uh, the issue of health cannot mitigate uh, criminal liability. It cannot mitigate it. The only thing that can be done is that she can be convicted and possibly be kept uh, in a hospital where she will have to go through uh, medical care. And after her medical care and all that, she will uh, be taken back to prison to service her time. But because um, the truth is that uh, 
you cannot use uh, ailments, okay, as an engine uh, to uh, stay away or to say because you are sick, then criminal prosecution and thereafter conviction should not be handed down where the suspect is said to have committed the offense, except she's tried and she's not found wanting or, or guilty of the offense, then she can go scot free and then go and continue uh, taking care of herself medically. But if she is found guilty of any of the allegations and charges against her, um, they, they can only get the doctors in to treat her while she will, she will be kept in custody. In other words, uh, um, a medical condition cannot extricate her from criminal liability, and that is what the law is. And the United okay. Kingdom takes that very seriously. All right. Legal expert Evans Fafeli, many thanks for your time and contribution. Moving on, the Minister of Defence and the Minister of State for Defence, Mohamed Badaro and Belo Matawale, respectively, have reeled out a definitive action plan as the nation looks to effectively counter emerging threats in the country. The minister spoke on Tuesday at an occasion to mark their assumption of office at the ship house in Abuja. The Defence Minister, Badaru, who admitted that insecurity poses a serious threat to economic growth, however, promised that insecurity would be a thing of the past in the next one year. On his part, the Minister of State for Defence, Belo Matawale, dwelt on the importance of training and retraining of the security agencies to build a strong defence apparatus to check the excesses of criminals in the country. We will cooperate with all the security agencies in this country. We will soon go and start a monthly meeting with all other security agencies and their ministers to have complete cooperation among ourselves on how to do, how to solve the security challenges in this country. I'm fully aware that the tax I had it's not an easy one, but I'm confident that with the support of my colleagues, the dedication of our armed forces, and our unwavering commitment of every Nigerian citizens will overcome any challenge that comes in our way, inshallah. I and my brother, the Honorable Minister of Defense, His Excellency Muhammad Badr Abubakar, have both resolved to adopt a comprehensive and multifaceted approach to effectively tackle the rebellion security issue, our armed forces must be modernized and strengthened through investment and advanced weaponry, intelligence gathering capabilities, surveillance system, and cyber defense infrastructure. We will work closely with international partners to acquire cutting edge technology and expertise that will enhance our defense capability. President Bola Tinubu has met with the President of the Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS Commission, Omar Toure, and former Head of State Abdul Salami Abubakar at the Aso Villa. Abdul Salami had led an ECOWAS delegation to Niger over the weekend for final negotiations for a return to of power to depose President Mohamed Bazoum. After his meeting with the president, the envoy said he is hopeful that diplomacy will help resolve the political situation in Niger Republic without recourse to the use of the military option. The ECOWAS heads of state have made me an envoy to Niger Republic and we, over the weekend we were there to see the military people and discuss to find a way out of the lacuna we find ourselves. So that's why I'm here this uh, afternoon together with the president of the ECOWAS Commission to give a report back to Mr. President on our discussion uh, uh, in Niger. I must say that the, our visit to Niger has been very fruitful in that, that it has opened an avenue to start talking and hopefully um, we will get somewhere. Well, like I said, we, we started talking. They have, we made their own uh, points, and then I made my report to the chairman of the ECOWAS Heads of State and President. He will now consult with his uh, colleagues, and then the, the ding-dong starts, and we'll get somewhere, hopefully.
hopefully, hopefully diplomacy will, 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 will see the better of this thing. Nobody wants to go to war. It doesn't uh, pay anybody. But then again, you know, the, uh, our leaders have said, if all fails, and I don't think all will fail, we'll get somewhere, we'll get out of this mess. Still on the Niger crisis, the African Union says it has suspended the country until civilian rule in, is restored and would assess the implications of any armed intervention in the troubled Sahel nation. In a communique issued on Tuesday, the bloc said its decision to suspend Niger followed the failure of the military junta to hand over power to the democratically elected president, Mohamed Bazoum. The AU also commended the efforts of ECOWAS in its efforts to ensure a return to democratic rule in Niger. Well, to speak further on this, Global Affairs Analyst Sheo Shoile joins me now. Thank you very much for your time. Now, just after meeting the military junta over the weekend, former head of state Abdul Salami Abubakar has met with ECOWAS chairman, that's President Bola Tinubu, and all parties are insistent on the use of diplomacy as against the use of force. Now, do you see the junta giving in to the demands and reinstating ousted Bazoum? Well, um... The, uh, the ding dong has started. Um, we have seen a situation where the leader of the junta has come up to uh, to give uh, a condition, and of course, uh, negotiation will start from there. You know, they have given three years, which has been rejected, but this will definitely open an avenue for exchange of ideas, for negotiations, and uh, hopefully, diplomacy will carry the day. I'm particularly glad in by the disposition of the ECOWAS envoy to Niger and their stance on uh, or their insistence on diplomacy carrying the day at the end of the day. I mean, uh, nobody wants war like he said, and I would just hope that uh, the, uh, the cloud that is gathering with regards to military action will eventually diffuse and they will give peace a chance in this instance. Suspension has implications for Niger domestically and within the African Union. Do you think it's a good move on the part of the AU to address the military coup in Niger? Well, sanction is also a dimension of war, and uh, it is meant to put the junta um, under immense pressure, so that at the end of the day, something favorable can be uh, so, uh, can be agreed. You know, uh, an agreement can be reached quite on time. I, I, I think that um, uh, AU has done well by mounting some pressure on the junta and um, on, on, on the purchase. And um, hopefully, uh, this immense economic uh, sanction and uh, pressure will hasten uh, the steps towards getting to uh, an agreement and then um, we can go back to our life. Obviously, war is a no no. It is better to Georgia than to World War. All right, Global Affairs Analyst Show and Shirley, thank you for weighing in on uh, the situation. Now, the Chinese community in Lagos has once again reiterated its desire to sustain and strengthen bilateral relations with its host community. Both countries made this known at the first combined cultural and art affair put together by the China National Traditional Orchestra and the Huaxing Arts Troupe in Nigeria. The event created a platform for an exchange of traditional cultures of both countries. Our correspondent, Sidney Okafo, has more details. It was a colorful display of tradition by two cultural giants with a long history at the first diaspora combined concert of the China National Traditional Orchestra and the Housing Art Troupe in Nigeria. The event served as an opportunity to examine the thriving cultural relationship between Nigeria and China while positing a way forward to ensure an enduring mutually beneficial partnership. Dressed in traditional clothing, both countries showcase dance moves and music, revealing the historical processes which have been significant to their development. Speaking at the event, the chairman Chinese Industrial and Commercial Enterprises Association and Housing Art Troupe Nigeria, Eric Ni, nee, 
said the combined concert is a driving force of social progress for Nigeria and China. He also assured that the Chinese community in Nigeria will continue to support the Nigerian government. We promote Nigeria and China culture and the music we join together promote between China and Nigeria relationship. So far we are here, we want more support. Chinese community here, Nigeria also like our own second home. So we continue to support the students and the orphanage. Even we give low-income family support and also education. You can, that they can perform in the same stage, in the same volumes, right? Same music. If that means Nigeria and China, as the general say that, Nigeria is the number one in Africa. China is number one in Asia. So they should be work together. Other stakeholders at the event commended the efforts of the Chinese community in Lagos for their political and economic influence and the massive support towards developing Nigerian youths with necessary skills, which has greatly helped to boost the nation's economy in diverse ways. What you've seen here today, Nigerian girls and boys singing in Chinese language, communicating in Chinese language, is to tell us that Nigeria is going ahead of other countries to prepare for the future. Chinese has always been our good friend. They have put so much energy to make sure they develop the art and culture in Nigeria. And today now, they are bringing Nigeria troop with Chinese troop to show the culture. We have the same independent day, October 1. And this is a great achievement for us. Currently, Nigeria is China's third largest trading partner in Africa, and China is Nigeria's largest source of imports due to their cordial relations, which has generated over cumulative investment worth of 20 billion US dollars. We'll take a break here, but still to come, BRICS Bank shifts away from dollar to issue 30% loans in local currencies. We'll have details after this break. Welcome back. Let's take a quick recap of our top stories. Former president of the Organization of the Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPEC, Diazani Alice Madwiki, has been charged by the United Kingdom's National Crime Agency, NCA, with bribery offenses relating to her time as Nigeria's oil minister. Alice Madwiki, who served as petroleum minister from 2010 to 2015 under the administration of former President Goodluck Jonathan, has been accused by the NCA of benefiting from at least £100,000 in cash and the use of multiple London properties. We also told you that the Minister of Defence and the Minister of State for Defence, Mohamed Badaru and Bello Mohamed, respectively, have rolled out a definitive action plan as the nation looks to effectively counter emerging threats in the country. The ministers who were speaking on Tuesday at an occasion to mark their assumption of office at the shiphouse in Abuja admitted that insecurity poses a serious threat to economic growth and promised that insecurity would be a thing of the past in the next one year. Now, in case you missed any of our news bulletins or for more updates, you can catch us on Limex World TV or log on to our website on www.tv360nigeria.com. You can also follow us on our social media platforms on Twitter, Instagram and YouTube at TV360 Nigeria and on Facebook for at TV360 Online.
Let's join Falashade Ogunride, who is on standby with Business News. Over to you, Falashade. Many thanks, Sinisala. Welcome to Business News. Nigeria lost a whooping sum of 249 billion naira in July, no thanks to the activities of crude oil thieves and pipeline vandals. In a recent report released by the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission, the country's total oil production dropped to 33.53 million in July from a previous production record of 37.5 million barrels in June 2023. There are more details in this report. Nigeria depends heavily on foreign exchange sourced from the sale of crude oil to fund its economy. In the first quarter of 2023, the NBS reported that earnings from crude oil exports make up 79.37% of Nigeria's total export revenue. But a worrying trend has emerged. A recent report by the Nigerian Upstream Petroleum Regulatory Commission indicates that as much as 249 billion naira crude oil revenue was lost in July due to the plunge in the country's oil output by over 4 million barrels. Experts say this is worrying. If we are producing 2 million barrels per day and uh, the revenue is coming to uh, for, uh, government coffers in terms of foreign exchange, you can imagine how that will be available to stabilize at the, the foreign exchange situation and the Naira. Now, if we are, uh, uh, the exchange rate used to be about 400, uh, 450 uh, Naira to a dollar before, and today it's running to about uh, 700, 750. You know, if that has contributed immensely to the problem of a hardship in the country. The commission named the usual suspects oil thieves and pipeline vandals. Between 2009 and 2020, the activities cost the country 619.7 million barrels of crude oil valued at 16.25 trillion naira. Crude oil theft is not carried in a handbag that you can carry just on, uh, like if you are carrying a laptop. It's not even carried in, uh, in a bucket. So if this uh, type of thing is going on, it, it passes through uh, uh, territorial waters. The vessels that were carrying the crude oil to international markets, we say that you know, the no security agency was compromised in the process. So, but the fundamental thing is that this problem has assumed uh, its dimension and it has become an industry of its own. A massive challenge for the government of this country. Over the years, they've been consistent looting of state treasury through illegal bunkers. The president, Tunubu-led administration, has not spelled out in clear terms how it intends to curb the menace of oil theft and pipeline vandalism. He has, however, promised to block all revenue leakages. For Lashade Ogurinde, TV360 News. We'll take a break here and return with a review of the stock markets to stay with us. The NGX continued on its positive sentiment as trade rallied on Tuesday. Investors gained as much as 158 billion naira, leaving market cap at 35.842 uh, trillion naira, while the all share index grew by 0.44%. Now, in the aggregate, 115 NGX listed equities participated in trading, ending with 16 gainers and 26 losers. Conestel Insurance uh, Company led the gainers with 9.84% share price appreciation. Closing at one naira thirty-four copper per share, followed by Computer Warehouse Group. Now, at the end of today's trading session, a total of uh, two hundred and ninety-three million volumes of shares valued at four point one billion naira exchange hands in five thousand eight hundred and um, ninety-five deals. Now, a similar uh, positive sentiment was recorded for some of our select global stocks that sits uh, the FTSE, Dow Jones, and Nikkei. 
Uh, Waterford CNAK finished strong in the greens at 0.18 percent and 0.92 um, percent um, respectively. Uh, the Dow Jones had a bearish trading day. The Dow Jones dropped on Tuesday as the stock market looked to add to Monday's gains. Among the companies rallying uh, well, uh, uh, Tesla uh, stock while um, NVIDIA shares uh, reversed lower. Uh, that's um, leaving the Dow Jones um, in the reds at 0.36 percent. And that's it on business news segment of news now. Back to you, Simi, for the rest of the news. Thank you very much, Fola for the update. And on the international scene, the new development bank, NDB, also known as the BRICS Development Bank, has announced plans to begin lending in South African and Brazilian currencies in order to reduce reliance on the U.S. dollar. In a recent interview, the bank's president, Dilma Rousseff, said the Shanghai-based lender was considering applications for membership from about 15 countries and was likely to approve the admission of four or five. Declining to name the countries, Dilma said it was a priority for the NDB to diversify its geographic representation, adding that lending in local currency would allow borrowers in member countries to avoid exchange rate risk and variations in U.S. interest rates. She said the bank is expected to lend between 8 and $10 billion this year with the aim of reaching about 30 percent of the entire bank's lending in local currency. And in sports, World 100 Meters Women's Huddles champion and record holder Toby Amusa will begin her title defense on Tuesday at the National Athletic Center in Budapest, Hungary. Amusa was cleared to defend her title last Thursday by the Athletics Integrity Unit after an appeals panel found she had not violated doping rules despite missing three whereabouts tests in 12 months. At the last edition of the World Athletics Championships in Oregon, the United States of America, Toby started her campaign with 12.40 African record before smashing the 12.20 world record set by Kendra Harrison in 2016 with an incredible 12.12 run. Amusan then won a historic gold medal in the final to become the first Nigerian world outdoor champion. Well, that's our bullets in this evening. Many thanks for watching. I'm Simisola Atikon.